G'day, welcome to episode 95 as we continue to explore Albania. In the last episode, we camped by the world's deepest gorge, swam in the blue eye, checked out a bunker and explored a fort. In this episode, we head into the mountains and get muddy on our journey northbound. This is where we camped last night. So when we got here, you can drive a couple of hundred metres further that way, which is where the hot spring is. But the ground, it was quite muddy and it was actually really busy. There was over a dozen other foreigners camped there in their cars. So yeah, we just thought we'll come back here. It wasn't muddy, it was pretty dry ground here and then we're not sort of camping on top of each other either. So anyway, we've just packed up. So we're gonna drive up there this morning. We've got a little visitor this morning. Doggo, he's got a really cute face. Hey Doggo. Hello. Doesn't want to say hello. Anyway, so yep, yeah, really looking forward to going for a swim this morning. Are you looking forward to going for a swim, Mark? Yeah. Hopefully it's not too busy. There hasn't really been. Hopefully you can find the warm one. There's uh, there's like, I think there's about eight here, hot springs. Um, the ones on the, like the main touristy ones are only 20 or 26 degrees, I think. And then there's another one, which is apparently a bit of a walk. And that one's about 30 degrees. So we're gonna try and find that one because I think it's more out of the way and better chance of having it to ourselves. killing me and I'm pretty sure when we were just doing that last little crossing that I stubbed it on a rock just like I did originally and it just yeah <laughs> so anyway we are, we're gonna go for a swim and then make our way back From the springs we headed north through the fur of Hotova National Park towards the town of Barat. With the amount of wet weather lately, the road wasn't looking too crash hot. While this didn't cause a problem for the troopy, a warning to anyone looking to tackle the route. It may be marked on Google Maps as a main road, though this is what you could potentially face. If the conditions are good though, or you're comfortable in the mud, it's a great chance to see a bit of Albanian mountain life.
see that. Back out up there, I didn't know whether he was blocking the road or whether it was block, what do you, they were there for a reason, but it seems to be clear. I'm gonna give it a go. I didn't particularly want to have to try and back back out of this mud, but here we go. So that track was a bit of fun. It was a lot wetter than uh, what I imagined it would be. So it took us two and a half hours to get about uh, 20 k's or so. And trying to find camp spots in this, I mean, it's it's pretty steep and the road's cut into the face of the, the hill uh, the whole way. And thankfully we've just managed to find this, um, some sort of paddock here. Yeah, we'll Looks like they've had some crops over here growing at some stage, but yeah, we just managed to pull in here and find a nice level spot. So I'm just about to set up now and. Have some dinner. Bit cold. <laughs> yeah. What are you cooking? Uh, I'm just. I bought some chicken schnitzel, so I'm just cooking those, and we're just going to have wraps for dinner. Cutting up some cheese. And Troopy got a new present. How are your feet now? Oh, it's so much better with it, lovely. <laughs> so no rain last night. It was a beautiful night. Stars are out, which has been the first night in, I think, probably over a week now we've had a night without rain, which is uh, very welcome. And today looks like it might, the sun might even stick its head out. It's clouds are slowly breaking, which will be good. Hopefully, um, we'll let uh, no rain last night and a bit of sun on this track, it might dry out a bit, um, which might make it a bit safer to drive on because um, it was pretty moist on the track and even in this field, you can see. We put the block underneath the wheel here to kind of level up yesterday and it just went straight down to the ground, which is actually why I put the handle on it, um, to pull it out in places like this. This side here is actually kind of just sunk down a bit as well. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, like the tracks after two days of rain is is almost impassable. Without a full drive, it wouldn't be passable. There was a section um, a few k's that way where I had to put in four low to get up this muddy, muddy part and um, when I shifted back to four high it didn't actually engage four wheel drive properly again and uh, so I was driving for a little bit in two wheel drive and the, it was just drifting so much and it's it was, it was actually quite dangerous because on one side you got a sheer drop and on the other side you're hard up on the wall and it's just it's very narrow like there's only a couple hundred mil to the edge of the, the drop off so these uh, all these villages and uh, homesteads just beyond these trees here there's quite a substantial homestead and um, so all these sort of places, I imagine, I imagine, would just be totally cut off in the winter because uh, these tracks would just probably be unpassable. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy to think that they're just out here for probably four or five months, just out of touch with the rest of the world, which, um, I mean, some people that might be a nice retreat. But it, um, it would also be very harsh. It, probably comparable on the other end of the scale to the homesteads in the Australian outback. There's... Um, Lots of people, this, although it might look sparse, there's actually, there's kind of people everywhere. There's, um, it appears to be, you can see a bit of smoke coming up over there. It must be another little homestead or village over there. There's a lot of shepherds walk, just roaming around. You probably hear in the distance over here, there's a shepherd moving his, his cows off. You hear the cow bells. <laughs> so yeah, the hills have eyes. <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to um, get back on the track now. We've got about three hours to go to another canyon and a bridge and um, hopefully some um, dry, more dry conditions.
driving through a little village, we thought we'd pop in and have a look. They've got street lights. And Kerbin Gutter. Beautiful little village, there's buildings here, it's amazing. Optimistic, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that was the slowest, like roughly 60 kilometers that we've done this entire trip. I think it was very slow going, but it was fun. I got to have a bit of a drive. Yeah, kudos to Jolly. She put herself way out of a car for zone and drove for a, a lot of that. We've got about 10 k's until we get to a bridge um, that we're going to stop and have a look at, and hopefully there's going to be a restaurant around there. We might stop and have some lunch too. We actually just coming the other way with this there was a guy from Hungary in a Skoda four-door sedan. One of the things that we've learned on this trip is you don't need a massive four wheel drive to get a lot of places. Um, as we see in some of those mountainous areas in Pakistan, we'll be driving up there in the snow and full drive and there'll be guys cruising past us in Corollas. But someone who's not used to these sort of conditions. I guess it's it's still it's doable, it's still drive yeah. here. But there's not a chance. Yeah. You get about a kilometre back when just when Jolly did that talk a second ago is when we got on the flat. Um, anything past that is not his vehicle just won't physically be able to do it. So anyway, he's going to turn around, but he looked very disheartened. <laughs> bridge which we were driving to. It's got a 12 ton limit sign so the troopy's got no worries. Yeah it's a beautiful gorge. It goes for ages too. Making it to Barat, we went in search of some local cuisine. We found this little restaurant in the converted courtyard of the charismatic owner Lily's house. We enjoyed delicious dolma stuffed with rice and herbs, ricotta with tomato and egg, stuffed eggplant, kofta, wine, and a few too many complimentary homemade raki all made in their family kitchen. <laughs> We 
head out of town, we've come for a drive up to, there's a fort. So we're gonna check that out and get a bit of a, a, a view of the city of Virat. It's a beautiful day today, the sun's shining, which is awesome. And we're just about to come up. Barat Castle was built upon this hill around the 4th century BC and like most castles of that era has been ransacked, rebuilt and extended over the centuries. Among the ancient cobblestone streets, the castle held 20 churches, a mosque, a giant cistern and a beautiful fortified courtyard. What's most unique about the castle though is that it's still a fully functioning town independent of the city below with its own bars, cafes, restaurants and bazaar as it has been since antiquity. That's it for this episode. If you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up and check out our socials for more info and pics. Thanks for watching. See ya.